Pink Tape is oh so retro with its album aesthetics. It's colorful with its visuals and is sweet with its candied vocals. It's a bright and bubbly representation of FX's summery sound. Vibrant pop that soldiers on through a minefield of generic music to create this brave and original crowning achievement. The review, track by track. Track 1, Rum Pum Pum. This album ain't big enough for any bad songs, which shares my sentiment of this being a powerful start, which made room for it to be their first number one single on Korea's Billboard music charts. Right out the gate, you're thrown headlong into a western at high noon. This track is the only one with a visual aid of a music video, making its deep impression on its listeners and lasting imprint on its viewers. It sets the stage for the strike of its unique, fun, vivacious backdrop, somehow standing out while cohesive with those that follow it. It's a spark plug that sets off a chain reaction of electricity with every song it touches, shining brightly without doing the shine of its prominent tracks. Track 2, Shadow. Eerie vocal renditions and childish instruments set a creepy atmosphere that's as endearing as a candy shop draped in cobwebs. The beginning winds up like a jack-in-the-box with whimsical beats, coated in lulling voices that pop up at just the right moment. This has always been a personal favorite of mine, which should come as no surprise that it was penned by the same mastermind of Rum Pum Pum. With this grim fairy tale aspect set to a merry-go-round arrangement, while just as mind-altering as Funhouse Mirrors. Track 3, Pretty Girl. It's to my understanding that this is a tongue-in-cheek way to poke fun at a plain girl that's vain and finds all her value heavily placed in her appearances. As told by the Introducing the Wicked Witch of the West lyric, the electric riffs, hand claps, and pounding beat make for a gourmet feast with wonderful delivery and delectable singing. Track 4, Kick. This confectionery treat is packed to capacity with pep fit for cheerleaders at a rally. It's swaying with sass, it's sound rounded out with emphasis on powerful chants as opposed to letting vocals take the focus of the song's scope. I can imagine a scene in a movie where they have a dance-off or cheer battle to the song, peppered by its upbeat and saucy flavors that make this a red-hot track. The echo at the very end neatly ties up the piece as a powerful gumbo of optimism seasoned with diva confetti. Track 5, Signal. This is a groovy track with Batman vibes in its title. It somehow elicits feelings of cruising a mall, surfing, and going undercover as a secret agent all under one umbrella. It's fun and sure to make you smile. It signals for escapism if you're feeling low and need a pick-me-up. And it's just as fragrant as a forget-me-not. I can envision strobe lights and lava lamps and disco balls with how visual the sound is. Amber's rap in the bridge sneaks into the melody in a way that gives the song its cherry on top. Overall, a song that makes your heart pace as anticipation builds to an insurmountable crescendo that reigns above others. Track 6, Step. This is a sunny dance track that a DJ would spin at a party, maintaining its cool pulse that dominates the music scene with its racing dynamics of beats performing somersaults. I like that it tones itself down, pacing itself for a few counts before climbing right back up, pouring up and down scales like it's child play. It fits the album's theme like a glove and cements it as yet another FX hit that's highlighted in Luna's beautiful range. Track 7, Goodbye Summer featuring DL of EXO. You wanna know a crime on par with larceny? Not listening to the song. Either way, <laughs> somebody getting robbed. Honestly, the pleasant, delightful strums of an acoustic segue into honey sweet vocals that take flight in the summer sunshine. I imagine a couple lounging by the pool, dangling their feet in the water as the male plays guitar to accompany a lovely duet. This song was the first known time that our llama, Amber, self-composed and later revived her own body of music. Amber's rap heralds regrets of a relationship that's come undone with misconceptions of having exceeded its expiration date. Luna's vocals somersault and nosedive off cliffs, the pain mourning relationship seems to bring. It's a definite title holder, overlooked by yours truly, that deserves this review as a handwritten apology to the song for not listening to it quite enough, and to me for robbing myself blind of its contagious, infectious, idyllic poetry. Track 8, Airplane. An explosively colorful songbird of a track that soars with each passing beat, shattering sound barriers with its intense buildup, shooting to the stratosphere like a rocket without ever losing its steam to a cool down in the bridge. It's a song that doesn't stop moving to allow you a moment of rest, but it's so charged with this built-in dancey fanfare that you don't want to. Speaking that precedes the chorus makes for a great contrast to set this track apart from the rest of this fanciful, youthful album. Track 9, Toy. 
Its motions can be heard at the very start, well into the fullness of the first verse. It feels like a Toyland daydream with the march of a Nutcracker army that hails through its funky and playful beat. Their voices further manipulate the track into a childlike euphoria that makes me want for a Christmas from my adolescence. The bridge is intensely different and is now my favorite part. It hits unexpectedly in a way that propels the song forward on its chugging train of creativity within its youthful confines. Track 10, No More. A somber, fruity cocktail as you lounge on a beach while gray clouds gather in the distance. While it's bouncy with most of its vocals, I still hear a sobering undertone that makes me question whether it's meant to be a sad song with a happy sound or vice versa. It's like we kicked off the song deep in the blues and took to the rest of it like a happy pill, flowing through our veins with its doo-wops and alluring harmonies. This track was also a song by Ariana Grande entitled Boyfriend Material that transcends the language barrier to convey its punch of sounds. It's somehow a conga and a pity party wrapped up in a fraying colorful bow. Two mutually exclusive contrasts that marry five voices in a fashion that's never been outdone. Track 11, Snapshot. The introduction that Amber provides gives me talent show vibes. I teeter between visuals of showgirls and a performance involving a table being sawed in half. It conceptualizes top hats, coattails draped over a button-up vest, bow ties, fishnet stockings, and heels with the spotlight highlighting this compelling act. It's classy with jazzy, old-time vocals, just as loud and proud as its writing counterpart Pretty Girl, with its own approach. The arrangement is sure to take you by storm as the rest of its soft vocals melt and burst into bold and beautiful displays. The bridge is somehow a combo of two distinct flavors that could clash if not handled as deftly as its confectionery delight. Track 12, Ending Page Electric guitars are automatic ear candy for me. If I hear an iconically good riff, I'm sold. So that's why I gouge on its rich chocolate fusion every time the song enters my ears. Crystal's good day gone bad line always strikes a melancholy chord within me, making this deconstructed and stripped down finale even more bittersweet as it draws the curtains to a close. And now for my album rating. I rate the album... 4 out of 5 Pocky Sticks. For the moment you've all been waiting for, my top 5 tracks on the album. Track 5, Step. Track 4, Shadow. Track 3, Rum Pum Pum. Track 2, Pretty Girl. Track 1 is Snapshot. I hope you guys enjoyed my review for a second FX album, although technically I did it out of order. Whatever. Let me know in the comment section which ones you want me to review next, whether it be from FX, another group altogether, K-pop, whether it be a movie, a book, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. Bye guys and smiles all around.